Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. <laughs> I, uh, I realized I was like, I don't know, for some reason I got a split second burst of energy and I, and I kind of went with my pronunciation. And then <laughs> and then I thought, well, I can't really do that for the rest of the sentence. So I just kind of like overpronounced it. But anyway, good morning. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day. And this man, looking all sexy and beautiful in his ice cream uploads esports jersey, is the man that we call BB. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. We've got Bybin Ho. Uh, We've got Bybin Ho. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, 10 a.m. ish. It's 5 to 11, but it's fine. Uh, on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham, as mentioned. This is Bibi, and we together are part of the ice cream team. And in true ice cream fashion, this is the scoop. Your daily dose of news from the world of video games. We bring in you the biggest, the best, and the breaking news stories from video games. And that's because we are the UK's number one video games podcast. Even if we do say so ourselves, you know, self proclaimed in that. But still, <laughs> number one to somebody and it's us. It's fine. Uh, what did you get up to last night, babe? Well, as you could imagine by my tone of voice as we was leaving the podcast yesterday and I realised that Minecraft Dungeons was available to play on Xbox Game Pass on PC, I most certainly downloaded that and I give it a good spin a -rooney. It's bloody brilliant. Uh, it's really, really good. I, yeah, you've just... Um... Get up, get up. I'm trying to find it. Uh, you just remind me that you texted me yesterday and saying that I should I should get on it or something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mate, get Minecraft uh, Dungeon. You and Chloe will love it. Just not playing anything but Fortnite right now, so. Yeah. Well, if you've got Games Pass or whatever, um, if you can get it for a quid for three months, if that offer's still going, it, when you, it take out the word Minecraft at the beginning and it would be universally probably looked at but just because it's got the words Minecraft in the uh, in front of it, I was sceptical because I'd, uh, Minecraft just doesn't look like a game that I'd want to get into at all. But it's not a Minecraft game. If you'd ever played any of the uh, Diablo games or any of the top... What were, it was like Marvel Ultimate... Not, Ultimate not, yeah, like Ultimate Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but there was one that was free to play on the PlayStation years ago. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, like Marvel Origins or something like that. Basically, it's just, just a dungeon crawler game, very much like Diablo. Arigato. Yeah, go through the dungeons. Pardon? I said Arigato talking to anything oh. in the chat. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, it's just a dungeon crawler game. You go through the dungeons, get better weapons, get better armor as you go along, enchant your weapons, um, get more XP, and just level your character up. It's just a dungeon crawler game in Minecraft blocks. But because the camera angle's at a certain angle, it doesn't look as blocky yeah. uh, like a Minecraft game. I saw that. Um, but, yeah, videos. it's so much fun. I thought, uh, it's still going to be Minecraft. And then I, I went onto it, and there's better textures. Uh, so obviously they've got, like, obviously Minecraft, uh, it's pro Minecraft's probably uh, better now, because I know there was some sort of 4K texture updates and this, that, and the other, but the last time I played Minecraft, it looked like Minecraft. It looked like, yeah, the low red sort of polygonish kind of thing. But they kept that art style, obviously, and it's it's just smoother. It's just nicer. It's like postmodern, yeah. something that's... Uh, yeah, it's like that that fresh ice cream. designed uh, today, but using yesterday's art style, and it looked really good. So it was a bit I saw. Yeah. It was only about a thirty second clip from some sort of like what's the angle that you call it up in the air? I can't remember what that, that angle's called. Uh, but yeah, yeah, decent, decent. It's it's really really good. If you've got get Games Pass, then just download it. It's like three gig if that on the PC. Um, it's definitely worth playing, especially if you want to get in there with your mates as well, so you can play online. Oh, you can play couch co-op. It really don't matter, but it's 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 brilliant. It's really really good, especially for like those kind of games. So, I did play quite a bit of that last night, and then went on to my football manager save, which I was playing to laugh to this morning, <laughs> um, and still played as we was going live today. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying that as well. I was up to laugh two ish as well with with Mr. NXPVP in the chat, uh, absolutely destroying uh everyone in PUBG. Apart from the very last team. We had a few second place finishes, but but you know, we we got we got a win on stream yesterday, so we can't complain too much. Uh seems like the chat's with you on the Minecraft though. Rise, good morning. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons is class. Uh Bye, ads, ads, thank you very much for those. For those of you listening on um audio services as well, if you ever hear this Thank you for the ice cream. That noise is just we don't have some sort of child breaking to the back of the room. That is um a oh, actually, I'm, I'm confused. That... Stay frosty, yeah. There we go. That's what I was waiting Pog for. Pog champ. Pog champ. 
Um, okay, let me let me let me let me give add some in motorspan. So if you hear this noise, thank you for the ice cream. That is our host alert noise. So if you ever hear that, if you listen to the audio service, obviously you can't see it, but that's what that is. But that noise that you just heard then, the Steve Frosty, yeah. Um, that was ads subscribing again to the channel is three months sub today thank you very much ads you lovely lovely man you did, hey, say, you did say you were going to do it the other day i said you didn't have to uh if you you know if times are hard or whatever and and so on but do you know what you did and we appreciate it very very much thank you very much um uh enix says microsoft have a good start with micro uh, minecraft dungeons my only issue is no destructible environments uh i think that's the kind of thing you've got to give and take if you if you want it to be more of a uh, less of a constructive, destructive game and more of something that you run through, then you can't have people just pickaxing mm. their way through the floor and out through the bottom of the world. Ah. Yeah. Well, I think this is definitely the entry level into things like Diablo. So many, 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 many years ago, we had Simpsons Hit and Run, one of the most iconic PlayStation 2 games or GameCube or original Xbox games ever made, which was pretty much a watered-down version of Grand Theft Auto. I definitely think that this... Minecraft Dungeons is going to be the entry level into the likes of uh, a, a Diablo game. Um, if kids are... I mean, I've, I like Diablo, um, and I now like this game, so I'm kind of going the opposite way, but it definitely, I feel like it is an entry level into those kind of games, like the old school dungeon crawler games that, we, for me, we just don't see enough of anymore. Um, but yeah, this is definitely, I think, an entry level into it, similar to what we had with the likes of um, Simpsons Hit and Run, and then Lego Undercover as well, which, again, I love the Lego games. I'm not ashamed to say it. If you can get hold of a Lego game, it's best to be played in two-player, but the Lego games are tend to be hilarious, especially the Batman ones. Lego Undercover was, again, a, a, it's what felt like a clone of Grand Theft Auto, um, just like a watered-down version for the younger viewers. But, yeah, definitely play that. Uh, I agree with the Lego games. Um, I... I was like, do you know, I like Lego, but the idea of playing a Lego game, it's just not for me. No, you're all right. Not not even interested. Went to get uh, buy my Xbox 360, and there was a, a console in game uh, where I got my 360 from and set up in the corner. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, there's the standard stuff in there. I'm going to pick up. Oh, oh. Drake, good morning or good evening, whatever time it is for you. Thank you very much for the raid again. Much appreciated, dude. So it's all going on this morning. The back to back raid, host, uh, <laughs> sub as well. Uh, 3 a.m. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was saying. I lost my train of thought then. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, the Lego games. Not. Uh, uh, Twitch hat, what's that garbage? Uh, it's all about those ice cream uploads. That's a real hat. <laughs> It was is this uh, is just here right now. I actually don't have an ice cream uploads hat. Um, I have. We've got one in the office somewhere. Uh, did we not give that away as a comp prize? I thought we did. I can't remember. Um, I thought it's still on your desk. It could be. It could be. Uh, but the office is an hour away, and I'm not allowed to go there. So you know, you know, you know. <laughs> uh, fake fan. <laughs> um, Speaking of hats, thank you very much for your purchase as well. So that the other day, much appreciated. Uh, if anyone wants to get involved Beautiful in an ice cream uploads hat, then do you know if Bibby has checked that open? I don't know if he does. He might do. Uh, it was on. The, I did actually put it on the start of service again. See whether or not it load. And my guess is it probably isn't because it's a shower of shit. And it didn't. Oh, well, in a few minutes, press X and mark merch, and you'll be able to uh, get in there. But anyway, I was saying the Lego games, not for me. Nah, not nah, not interested. Looks childish. Looks like I'm going to be playing through some on CITV. Went to buy my Xbox 360. There was a, a 360 set up in game, um, and they had the uh, Lego Star Wars games on it. And within five minutes, I was like, yep, I'm, get, I'm getting that yeah. with. What? Yes! What a legend. What a guy. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Phantom dropping. Stay frosty, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just going to keep listening to this now. Boom, stay frosty, yeah. Boom, <laughs> stay frosty, yeah. Is it, is it going to keep going? Stay frosty, yeah. No, it wasn't even Phantom, it was Enix. <laughs> uh, so Enix dropping five gifted subs. If you got a sub from en Enix, then please feel free to uh, say thank you in the chat. You know, spread What's the love. a hero? Jed, uh, stay frosty, yeah. Jude, what are you doing, man? Honestly. But yeah, much appreciated. Wow, all the alerts this morning. Um, anyway, yeah, long story short, I'll skip past it. Lego thought wasn't going to be good. Played it, was ridiculously good. Now have all the Lego Star Wars games. Job's good. Stay frosty, yeah. 
Yeah, Stay Frosty. If you are listening, then um, we don't just have ghosts from Call of Duty whistling Stay Frosty yet into my ear over my shoulder. That is just... <laughs> Enix is dropping five gifted subs in the chat. What a guy. What a hero. Uh, Love you, man. Anyway, um, one thing that you were talking about, and there was a nice tedi- uh, tedious link in there, um, but I can't remember what it was, the wording that you were saying. It was like... Uh, Minecraft is kind of uh, a nod for those like old school sort of games and kind of bringing it back. And then I was thinking, oh, well, there we go. Speaking of bringing games back, let's jump into our first news article of the day, which we had absolutely no idea was about to happen. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There we go. A Silent Hill crossover is coming to Dead by uh, by Daylight, even written by Andy Robinson for VGC. The tagline says, Konami denied reboot claims earlier this year. (gasps) Ooh. So, Behaviour Interactive has announced a Silent Hill crossover for its asymmetrical 4v1 game, Dead by Daylight. The DLC will add iconic villain Pyramid Head, a new map, Midwich Elementary School, as well as new survivor Cheryl Mason. Dead by Daylight Silent Hill is live now via the public test build on Steam and will be launched on PC and consoles on June the 16th. The popular 4v1 horror game, which is said to have surpassed 20 million cumulative players, has featured numerous crossovers in the past, including DLC uh, DLC chapters for Stranger Things, Evil Dead, and so, speaking to IGN game director Matthew Coate, explained that the latest collaboration came about because Behaviour was already connected to Konami via its Japanese version. We were already connected with some of the tentacles of Konami. They are the official publisher of the physical copy of Dead by Daylight in Japan, so we were connected to some of the people already, Coate said. After a call with Konami, both sides realised it was a perfect fit to cross over Silent Hill with Dead by Daylight, he said. A Konami representative recently labelled claims is planning to reboot the Silent Hill franchise in partnership with PlayStation as untrue. According to a report published in March, Silent Hill's original development leads are helming a new instalment backed by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Masahiro Ito, art director for the series' first three games, Keiichi Toya- uh, Toyama, director and writer of the original 1999 Silent Hill, and Akira Yamoka, uh, series composer, were all said to be working on the new project. It was described as a soft reboot of the series, developed in collaboration with Sony Japan Studio, the first party developer which previously helped co-create Bloodborne and The Last Garden. So, new Silent Hill content. Not a new Silent Hill game, but new Silent Hill content content Dave, as, yep. a, as a man that has a marginal affinity with horror games <laughs> uh, thoughts have you seen the trailer for this first of all i have i have what do you think um see for me what i, what I think i don't know i mean I, I don't have an in-depth history with the silent hill games so i'm i'm looking at this someone that's fairly fresh in terms of I've played, I've played the Silent Hill games, but so long ago. I didn't play any things like Shattered Memories or whatever it is. Book of Memories, but Shattered Memories, whatever it's called. Um, the PS2, Shattered, 3. Both of them, Shattered Memories and Book of Memories. Um, Book of Memories, unfortunately, was the one on PS Vita, which wasn't a Silent Hill game, in my opinion. But um, so, yeah, I didn't play any of those. Um, and, yeah, I've, I've kind of been aware of stuff. So when it comes to Silent Hills, obviously I played PT, um, but when it comes to Silent Hill, I'm, I'm quite cold in that sense i've not i'm not coming into it one i've not played it recently i've not gone back and played through any of it um so i'm watching it more as someone that's that's generic probably probably like most people a lot of people won't have played a silent hill game these days and i'm saying that with some confidence because looking at the content that was on twitter yesterday a lot of people like what even is this thing walking around and and what i'm referring to for those that haven't seen the trailer uh, if you i mean it's only a trailer so we we're not going to worry about spoiling it because it's a trailer. That's the point of it. Um, but Pyramid Head appears in it and he's walking down the corridor uh, with his big ass fucking sword machete axe thing. Um, and it, it looks like Pyramid Head. Exactly. If you know what Pyramid Head is, you know it's scary as feck. Um, but all these people are like, what is it? It just looks fucking weird. I don't, I don't get it. Um, so I was kind of coming at it from this that. Is it? What? <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, Darian Drake dropping 15 bits. Wow, it's all go this morning. Thank you very much for the bits. Much appreciated. Um, but uh, a couple of lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm coming into it pretty pretty cold. Uh, and I'm thinking, do you know what? Uh, let's take it with a pinch. And then I'm seeing, um, what was the name of the character? Cheryl Mason, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl Mason. Um, I'm starting to see Silent Hill characters look like people, and that that's mm. ca- that was kind of a moment for me because I know I know you 
you resonate with the characters, and Bibby obviously has done because he uh, resonated with what was he called? Barry Bennett? Barry Barry <laughs> Barry Burton? Barry Burton? That's it. What a name! <laughs> uh, but I mean, he, even though he was only a <laughs> Barry Bennett, it's, it's, it's either way, he's still a middle-aged painter, decorator, window glazing salesman, or whatever <laughs> yeah. it was. Um, but like, okay, clearly you resonated with those, but but mm. you won't resonate with them as much uh like for, for, the, for the first time if you play the games now seeing a, yeah. a polygon snake in metal gear solid versus a fully like 3d real life textured sort of mm. snake uh from metal gear kind of thing looks better so seeing these characters as real things now kind of resonated well with me uh seeing pyramid head come back to life hearing the siren and watching the real world change into the silent hills sort of world yeah i mean that that all kind of resonated with me but but I've not played Dead by Daylight, so I don't know how that sits mm. in it, and I've not played Silent Hill for a while. But what about you, someone that has more uh, of a, an embedding in that sort of genre? Yeah. What do you think? I, I've, I mean, the trailer and the graphics. This I wish it. that looked like what. Um, are we got in ten bits again now? Thank you, Rise. Oh, the lads are in there today, aren't they? The boys are. <laughs> the boys are going for it. I appreciate all the support today, boys. Uh, we're flying. Um, but yeah, back to back to Silent Hill. Um, it's. It, I wish the Silent Hill game now would look like what it looks like in that trailer because it looks amazing. Like the cutscene, uh, the trailer that it's worked, it looks brilliant. One thing that can't get my head around though is that it's down as. I'm, I mean, I'm clearly missing something, but it's Cheryl Mason. But she, Cheryl Mason, in like the original one, she had she was obviously a young girl and she had black hair. But in like Silent Hill Three, she wasn't down as Cheryl Mason. She was down as Heather Mason. Yeah, I think it, it was. It was. I read the um, actual press release yesterday from uh, Dead by Daylight, uh, their post, and they're mentioning it. And I don't know, I, I mean, I kind of just took it with a, oh, okay, <laughs> like, yeah. because I don't know I don't know the reasoning for it. But they basically say um, Cheryl Mason, previously mentioned as Heather Mason, or previously called mm. Heather Mason. And I was like, oh, there must be a reason for that. For, for me, I don't, I yeah. don't really know, but yeah. Well, she lost her memory. Like she doesn't remember anything as of Silent Hill Three, and which is where she came back as Heather Mason. But I don't understand why they've got her down as uh, Cheryl Mason now in uh, a, a late teens, because that's what she looked like in Silent Hill Three. I'm guessing that's why they've gone with that character model rather than the ones from the original one when she was a young girl. But why they didn't just keep her as Heather Mason? That's the only thing that I can't get my head around. I don't make the decisions. I have no idea. But I mean, for, for a Dead by Daylight game, it's like Friday the Thirteenth, where it's just four v one. So having Pyramid Head as the four, uh, as the one, and then you running around as, he- <laughs> I mean, she did have another game as, a, as another name as Alessa. So you got Alessa, Cheryl, or Heather, take your name, <laughs> take your pick out when you're them. But uh, Young Mason, we'll call her. Um, <laughs> young yeah, Mason. Young Mason. Um, so we'll just take her name as one of the others. Don't really matter. But I think it's it definitely suits it. So we had Friday the Thirteenth, which was. It's just Friday the Thirteenth, and it you know what I mean. If you just um, Jason Voorhees knocking around and smacking people up, and yeah, whatever it is, um, this very much exactly the same kind of premise. But you're going to be Pyramid Head. Um, I've seen your brother as well mention that they did a crossover with Left for Dead. Yeah, I, I think they've done more than one crossover. Uh, well, I think this might be the third or fourth crossover. This game has had so much life breathed into it it's unbelievable it's still going out when did this game come out alexa it feels like it's been around when forever. was dead by daylight released the 14th of june 2016 there you go yeah so it's nearly five years old and it's still going out it's still going hard do you know what i mean what well it's four years old but yeah it's yeah. well for it'll be four years old next month uh it's interesting because i genuinely because i'm i'm not embedded into the horror genre uh i i've I've not played dead by daylight i've i've heard of it and i've seen like bits that that pop out beyond uh the realms of its genre generally so like dead by daylight oh yeah there's there's crossovers and things fine nice wonderful uh, stranger things crossover naturally that went everywhere um i've watched the uh, stranger things content my little ones watch stranger things i've got some stranger things merch and shit so naturally that sort of stuff bubbled into my sort of feeds so i've seen it but i've never actually played it uh, i don't even know what it looks like to play to be fair um but it clearly is successful if it's had uh, crossovers with left for dead and with uh, stranger things and with silent hill uh, c- clearly i don't I, i'm i'm not on the right train here i'm going somewhere else and this 
trend's clearly the one that everyone's keeping their eyes on. But so much content four years later and it's having big, big reveals like that, then that's pretty pretty tasty. I've just watched the yeah. trailer again. Well, I just played the trailer again. For those of you wondering why I had it full screen and then dropped it down, um, it's because I don't want Bigby to have a go at me. If we have it full screen, <laughs> yeah. uh, we could get content strikes on YouTube. So that's the reason why I dropped it back down to uh, being in window rather than full screen. I'd usually play full yeah. screen because it looks better. But um, yeah, I mean, it looks good. I mean, uh, watching it again, uh, re reaffirming my thoughts. Okay, I'm going to play it again, again. Uh, so for those of you that w weren't able to see it, this is the trailer. This is what I'm kind of talking about. Okay, there, there's the Cheryl Mason character in the classroom. It looks good. It's a real sort of person, but this bit when she opens the door, look at how realistic the face looks. That's yeah. the quality of the lighting on the eye and everything. It's just amazing. And then when I, nailed it. I see Pyramid Head walking down the corridor, it, it's amazing how, like, relativity and... and I, I know Pyramid Head is, is scary because I, I know that from past experience kind of thing. And seeing him walking in that sort of like tortured, non-human sort of way, it's what's scary about Pyramid Head is he's he's or it's uh, a something you know what it is. It's a man that's dressed like a butcher with a big knife. I get it. I can see what it is. I can tell what it is, but it's not quite right. And that's where the, the the scare factor comes from. You know what it is, but it's not quite right. The whole thing, everything in Silent Hill, it's a real world, but it's not. It's yeah. it's my town, but it's not kind of thing, and and, and that's kind of where the fear comes from. But and just seeing people going, what the fuck is that? It's not even scary. It's like you don't even know. <laughs> Put some respect <laughs> on Pyramid Head's name. <laughs> yeah, it's if you, you have, Silent Hill is definitely one of them games. You have an affinity, or you don't. It just looks ridiculous, or you absolutely love it. It's one of them things that you have to kind of experience for yourself to understand the whole Silent Hill world about uh, world about it because. Like in the film, for instance, I can't remember. I'm sure it's the second one. No, it's not. It's the first one uh, where the police officer dies. And for the first time, you get to see the world. The siren goes off. Uh, they're on the stairs, and the world starts to just deteriorate before them. Like, that's, that still gives Samantha absolute nightmares. It's just one of them things like you're either invested in Silent Hill or you're not. The second film is definitely better than the first one. I'm just saying, but um, <laughs> it's it, the uh, the entity of Silent Hill. The reason why people are pissed about not having a Silent Hill game is because they are brilliant. They second the Silent Hill two for me is definitely still the best game out of them all. Um, but it, each each to their own. They are all still decent games. Um, but yeah, I love the fact that one is we're getting a new lick of paint in Dead by Daylight, and two, I don't think. You could probably have picked a better IP to suit that um, that game, really, uh, to take it to the next level. Having Pyramid Head chasing you in a school with some characters from the original uh, ish. franchise, well, original ish. Um, They've been listening yeah, to us. I, the original ish characters, <laughs> ten a.m. ish. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's I think it's a, a match made in heaven. Nice. Nice. Let's jump back through the chat then. Uh, no worries. Uh, treat for the ICU team for carrying uh, for me carrying them in PUBG. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You carry us and you treat us. That makes sense. Okay, because he knows that he's not being carried. Um, although he, he did have a few wonder moments last night, uh, but on stream yesterday. I mean, I'm the one that had, had like eight kills when he only had like four. But whatever. Yeah, just saying. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> so, I mean, I can start playing again and just get one kill. You know what I mean? It's all right. One I kill back to him. counts towards the win. It's, it's all part. Of, it's all part of the game. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, there we go. Jumping back through the chat. Um, mm -mm -mm. Rise says, "Bibby, I finally got past the prison level on Resident Evil." Uh, sorry, 16. I completely missed that. I'm sorry. Uh, there was it kind of popped off in the chat though because Jordan rather rudely dropped five gifted subs uh, to uh, MCL Learning One, Shora, Tharian Drake, uh, Rise. I believe it was. Although my Streamlabs mini feed just randomly doesn't show everything. Sometimes it goes, yeah. Sometimes it goes no. Like it doesn't even show that ads resubbed as well. I can't see ads as resub in there. Um, but anyway, uh, there was a comment as well somewhere from ads saying, "Any more Masters of the League uh, today?" Yes, we will be following this episode of the scoop with Masters of the League straight after. So yeah, 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 stick around. Oh, there it is. I found it now. Um, there we go. Everyone watch those free bit ads and help out your boys. Yeah. Are they back? Because I, I can't see them anymore. I used to get the free bit ads all the time, but now I can't get any bits. It's like there are no adverts. I don't know whether it's just in our region or not, but yeah, I, I would spam every bit ad if I could, just so that I could throw like 
a penny here and a penny there. God damn right. <laughs> um, and it says, Silent Hill Fall was decent, one of my faves. Weird that they use Resi 3 characters rather than 2. Uh, Resi 3? Do you mean Silent... I, I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> uh, I'll move on. Cheryl was the name of the person in the Silent Hills film. Might be for people who've watched the film. That's a good shout, to be mm. fair. It could be a case of yeah, that. Yeah, I'm thinking that. I mean, if Cheryl's the name of the character in the film and this isn't Silent Hills storyline, then maybe they've just kind of merged the two together so that it's mm. recognisable for both and similar, but not but not like a proper canon story kind of thing. Uh, same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Exactly. Um, looked at the DLC D yesterday. There is tons. They need a tele to be cro- uh, crossover. That shit's scary. Imagine Tinky <laughs> Winky assassinate, assassinating you with Toby Custard. <laughs> time for Toby Custard. Uh, new type of environment for Dead by Daylight with an enclosed school. There is loads of lockers you can hide in, so gameplay-wise, it's switching it up. See, that terrifies me, like, mm. in that sort of sense. I'd be more scared running around... Uh, a refined, like restricted school environment, having to get into claustrophobic spaces like lockers to avoid the big fucking mega dude walking around with a twenty foot machete that looks like it's out of uh, Final Fantasy games. And yeah, that that would that would be more scary than me than just like something a bit more open. Uh, Dead by Daylight has Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. There was rumours of Pinhead from Hellraiser, but nothing's been heard of it since. Interesting. Nix, good day, y'all. Good morning. Um, if you'd tuned in just a few minutes earlier, you might have been in the, the running to get a gifted sub. Enix has just dropped a bunch of gifted subs, so you're late. Sorry, mate. Am I joking? Am I joking? Good morning. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, Ad says, let's go. And Enix says, Silent Hill 3. Yeah, there we go. So, would they use uh, Silent Hill 3 characters rather than 2? See, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm just looking now at all of the different uh, crossovers. I thought, I didn't think there was this many. This is incredible. Give so, us down, then. If- uh, they've got. I'm not, I'm not going to go through them all because we will be here forever. That's how many <laughs> there is. Uh, but we've got um, Halloween. We've got Ghostface from Scream. Uh, we've got Stranger Things, Nightmare on Elm Street, Leatherface, uh, Saw. I completely forgot about the Saw one. That's what that excited me back in the day. Uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Oh, cool. um, what was the other one? Obviously Silent Hill. Uh, uh, Bloodstained Sack. <laughs> no idea what that is. Uh, the Demise of the Faithful. <laughs> Uh, the Flesh of the Mud. Jesus, I didn't think that was uh, I might, I'm still in pop culture like, but yeah, and they've got so much DLC, and the game is six pounds twenty six. This could be what this could be an amazing party game to stream. That does give me some context, um, and the reason I say that does give me some context is these tweets. So let me open this up. So this is the. Uh, Dead by Daylight tweet from Dead by uh, Behaviour. Obviously, Behaviour Interactive mate, Dead by, uh, Dead by Daylight. They tweeted yesterday, coming June 2020, hashtag DVD, hashtag Dead by Daylight, hashtag Silent Hill. And it's just a link to their YouTube video. And I kept seeing things like this. This tweet here from Monsieur Jop says, presenting this license as iconic as Halloween and pretending it's on top of the horror world is either a joke, a lie, or a big fat mistake. I like Silent Hill, but please do not make such, uh, poor, such poor statements. I feel like I've been lied to and it's not a good feeling. Uh, and I was like, what is this on about? What are you on about? Present? No, no one says about presenting it as iconic, but I get it now. Because if they've had Michael Myers, and they've had Ghostface from Scream, and they've had uh, all these other people, and they've been teased as having Pinhead in it, I get where they're coming from, um, because those are iconic horror movies. However, I do completely disagree. If you're telling me that Silent Hill isn't iconic in a horror in the horror genre yeah not horror movies but if you're not telling me that ha- silent hill's not iconic horror then you are ignorant because it's it's mm. one of the most iconic horror video games that's ever existed so this this guy here um or or girl even maybe this person call me bacon what a name on twitter uh says remember people to pretend something isn't iconic because you yourself haven't heard of it is to be pretty ignorant. Silent Hill is a huge staple of the horror games industry and has sparked much of what's seen today, including the Evil Within and the Fear franchise. Amen, brother. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that's it. Um, uh, I'm just checking now because I'm I am 95% sure that they give this away as a PlayStation Plus game one month, and I'm just checking now to find out if it actually did. I'm just on the website. PlayStation Store, Dead by Daylight. Probably not the special edition. Is that what you get all the year? Uh, yes, they did. They did give it away. It's in my collection. Oh, baby. 
<laughs> I've got to check mine now. Uh, okay. Let me check. That is incredible. Oh, this could be it. This could be a definitely a streamable game, you know. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Grave search uh, for Edad by daylight. <laughs> just to give some, um, just to give some context to what Day Dead by Daylight is for those of you that may not have heard it, heard of it before. Uh, Dead by Daylight is a multiplayer four versus one horror game where one player takes the role of the savage killer and the other four players play as survivors, trying to escape the killer and avoid being caught, tortured, and even killed. Survivors playing a third person have the advantage of a better situational awareness. The killer plays in first person and is more focused on their prey. The survivor's goal in each encounter is to escape the killing ground without getting caught by the killer. Something that sounds easier than it is, especially when the environment changes every time you play. Uh, I don't know how they, I must have missed it. No. Oh. Oh, well. I'm sure it was around Christmas that they give it away. I sure. often forget stuff on the uh, PSN stuff. It's usually when we're talking about, oh, don't don't forget to get blah, blah, that, that I actually <laughs> get it. Oh, shit, I'm, t I'm telling other people not to forget, and I've forgotten completely. Uh, we should do a Dead by, Day a Dead by Daylight Silent Hill stream. Uh, they did, I'm sure, uh, I have it on my PSN stuff. Uh, Show-offs. Yeah, whatever. I mean, care, whatever. They, um, yes, I don't have it. Um, I, I bet ice cream, oh, I, I, we don't log in as ice cream uploads anymore, do we? Not there. Damn it! Damn it, Meg. Uh. Okay. Oh. Bear with me one second. I'm just whilst I'm here, I'm completely wasting everyone else's time so I can have Call of Duty World War Two, Farming Simulator <laughs> 19, and City Skyline to my basket because they're the free PS Plus games. Proceed to check out sixty-nine pounds ninety-eight worth of games for free. Order and pay. Pow! Continue shopping. Exit. There we go. Don't forget to download your free games from the PS Store. Call of Duty World War Two. We we spoke about it yesterday. Was announced uh, and released yesterday on PS Plus yeah. for next month. PS Plus games. They've done it a little bit earlier. Um, and City Skyline and Farming Simulator 19 are both there as well. So if you want to grab them, get them. Get them. Uh, get them. Uh, Rise says, "God damn, PlayStation gamers, Xbox has PC Master Race." Lol. <laughs> Jordan, is that you? <laughs> oh gosh, that's for my benefit. Nice impromptu nose ball just for a bit. Yeah. Uh, um. <clears throat> anyway, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Uh, so, from something uh, being announced and will be coming soon, to something that won't be coming very soon. What were you about to say then? I was going to say on the tangent of free games. Oh, you ah okay, ah, okay. I was I was gonna uh, go a different way. Uh, let's no, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're talking about No Man's Sky. I most certainly am. Nice. Okay. Well, let's go with that one. That's fine. Let's go that way. So, obviously, talking about three game, free games for PlayStation. It's not just PlayStation. Rice says, "Goddamn PlayStation gamers, Xbox slash PC master race will have no fear because you know we're a, we're an all inclusive gaming uh, channel here." So, No Man's Sky is coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC in June. This article is written for PC gamer by Fraser Brown, and the tagline says, "Go to space on the cheap." Nice. Uh, <laughs> Cosmic Sandbox No Man's Sky is going where many games have gone before as it's getting a Windows PC version and is coming to the Microsoft Store. This isn't normally a cause for celebration, granted, uh, but the news also coincides with its imminent arrival on Xbox Game Pass for PC. This means you can take No Man's Sky for a spin for £1 or $1 if you're a new subscriber, which will increase to £4 or $5 subscription after the first month. That's pretty great. Uh, just for a month of No Man's Sky, but Games Pass also boasts a library that includes Sea of Thieves, uh, PC's best ongoing game of 2019, and the surprisingly great Gears Tactics. No Man's Sky wasn't quite what we were hoping for when it launched in... What? Was that 2016? Damn. I know. Yeah. A long time ago. No, that's, that's crazy. Uh, so No Man's Sky wasn't quite what we were hoping for when it launched in 2016, but over the course of countless updates, it's grown into an elaborate space explora exploration romp and a creative outlet. There's building now and proper multiplayer, as well as mechs, living ships, and multiple storylines. Hello Games has had a very busy few years, and it's all been integrated into the base game, so don't need to shell out for DLC extras. 
It's still a bit of an acquired taste, but that makes it perfect for something like Game Pass, uh, where you can spend a quid, and if it's not your thing, you'll probably find at least a few other games to keep you occupied. You'll be able to download No Man's Sky on Xbox Game Pass for PC in June. Bib, thoughts? Yes. Um, I think this is a fantastic move. Um, we've seen No Man's Sky be the laughing stock of the video game world, um, promising the world, and then ultimately not giving what people wanted within the universe it should have been. There was a bazillion and bajillion and gazillion planets on there, and there was all bland as shit. Um, <laughs> since 2016, uh, they have uh, earned a reputation of now be having one of the, I don't want to say the best games out, but definitely a, a live service game that people want to potentially go and play now. Um, I've seen people like Alana Pace um, going on about this game now, saying that it's a completely different game from the original uh, that we've seen in 2016. I want to say original, I don't mean this is a sequel. I mean, they have literally been given free updates to a game, which I think they're close to fulfilling all the promises that they made back in 2016 if not they've gone a step further um and delivered a little bit more than what they intended on doing but that is for me is a live service game they haven't put anything in there which you have to pay for which they didn't promise originally it's took them a long time to get there but for me now it looks like a studio worth something rather than the laughing stock that there was back then <laughs> And the fact, that, again, like I said in here, if you haven't played it before, I haven't played it before, but I most certainly will be giving it a download when it comes to Game Pass because I want to I wanna get the feel. I used to watch Yeehaw stream this when he first came out, and it just it felt empty. It was just flying to different planets. It was, it was landing, it was salvaging, and then moving on to the next one. Do you know what? I do that, I do that in PUBG and I die. It's a looting simulator <laughs> for me, do you know what I mean? And that's what it feels like, but they've kind of delivered on the promise now and i think it possibly will be worth your time yeah but you've had you've had two wins in pubg now so <laughs> absolutely smashing it uh see that what I, I like about no man's sky is it does what you can't do in video games you never ever ever get a second attempt at a first impression mm -hmm. Ever. Never. Yeah. It doesn't happen. It's impossible. It's impossible. But then No Man's Sky went and did it. They came out in 2016 with a game that it, it sounded like the devs were speaking to the, let's just say marketing guys, because I don't know any of, I don't know anyone individually at No Man's Sky. Obviously, there are people that lead it, um, but the devs didn't, like, it's almost like they were saying, oh yeah, we're, we're having it so that you can, you can have co op sort of bits and you can kind of play together. And then the, um, the, the marketing people, the people that do the interviews, the people that speak to the press and the media and so on, have gone, okay, that's, so that's multiplayer, so you can play online together and you can do that. Yeah, wonderful. And the devs have probably said something that was technically true and the uh, marketing people have taken that and said something that's kind of the same thing but very, very different. So similar words but different things. So when they're, they're talking about, yeah, the game is multiplayer, that was one of the things at the beginning. They were saying you can you can play with your friends. Uh, the game is multiplayer. And then when it came into it, and it wasn't quite multiplayer. There were some things that maybe was multiplayer hidden within it. But there was stories of people flying to the exact same part of space, being on the exact same planet or exact exact same rock on the exact same planet, being stood there and going, "I'm here. Where are you?" And they're like, "Well, I'm also here." And it's like, "It's okay." And so we're in the same game. You're playing the same game. It's supposed to be like some sort of online multiplayer. That's what they kind of badged it as. And we both stood on the same spot and we can't see each other. How is that multiplayer? So pe yeah. people were saying it's, it's genuinely not what you've promised. You've said it's one thing and it's something different. And No Man's Sky were like, uh, okay, okay. They, they didn't say they didn't say we fucked up. Um, but they didn't go, no, 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 let's head in the sand and completely ignore it like a lot of game companies do. They'll go, fuck, okay, well, we've done fucked up, let's just leave it uh, and we'll just make what money we can and we'll cut our losses, job's good enough. They kind of addressed it. And like I say, four years later on, we're still talking about No Man's Sky. There's, there's, we're talking about it right now, about it coming to a new format and people are excited about it because it is, it's like the phoenix from the flames. You don't get phoenixes in video games. You crash and burn. That's it, game over. Uh, but No Man's Sky has done that. They've managed to crash and burn and then pow, straight out of the, uh, those flames comes this game that's been lasting for four years on. Has all of that sort of like sandboxy multiplayer elements that, that they've done a very good 
uh, job of it. Um, Fatman Dave says they didn't have marketing; it was the devs themselves. They couldn't afford a PR team. Plus, their studios were flooded mid development. Yeah, when I don't see, I mean, marketing. When I'm saying it, that that was a generic phrase. That's what I was saying. I was saying, let's just call them marketing marketing people. The guy that will be doing the talk uh, to the press and media um, will have been, say, like their social guy or whatever. That their person who does the wordy side of bits of the business not not necessarily a dedicated pr firm um but like some someone that he, yeah. isn't doing the intricacies of coding the, the development uh the side of it so so someone will I mean, i'm not saying that's exactly what it is either this is my assumption but but someone sat there and gone boom okay we've made it so that, that you can play with others and they're probably meaning some sort of like passing a baton in cross progression -y sort of kind of stuff and, and someone's then okay, play with others, multiplayer, boom. So it'll be working close enough with it. But the, but that that is exactly what kind of happens in small teams of that size because people are so busy and doing multiple jobs that information doesn't always get shared. You're thinking, well, you're, you're such a small team, you should know everything in and out. Yes, you should. But on a project that's as big as No Man's Sky, if you're a small team, then you're working flat out. So it's easy to miscommunicate mm. certain little bits. So yeah, it's probably not necessarily a marketing department in terms of, uh, some guy like uh, Neil Druckmann, who's going to be doing the um, uh, the talk for The Last of Us on tonight's State of Play stuff. Like he is a dev. Um, he well, he's, he's director or whatever, but he comes from dev. But he won't be involved in the in intricacies of the bottom level of production and coding and so on. He will be kind of like in for a talk, but but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, No Man's Sky is coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC in June. Uh, I just had another alert. Drizzy, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to Ice Cream. Much appreciated for the follow. Um, Enix says Sony was probably guilty of pushing it further as well. Uh, as Sean, good example of watch what you say. I think that's it as well. Um, it came at a good time for Sony. It was it was something different. It was something creative. It was something that people kind of thought, Do you know what, I quite like the idea of that. Um, like taking off imagine gta multiple planets you can run around vice city and then jump in your uh, your uh, spaceship and then just fly off to mars and then and see like the red planet city or whatever and, and the idea that you can start off on the ground run along the plants get into a ship and then just fly into the space into space and it and it not have loading scenes and stuff like that that's kind of what caught people and so yeah sony saw that and we're like yeah we'll push with it as well but yeah all that with some miscommunication stuff just didn't um didn't go down very well. Didn't go down very well. Um, but anyway, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Oh, actually, we do have a link. What's that link there, Big? Uh, I posted, just posted a link in there from last year, um, and it was um, the community for No Man's Sky did a crowdfunding for just short of five grand to be able to buy a billboard uh, and a load of beer for the developers just to say thank you for continuing with the game that they adore so much. I'm talking just a bit then. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I was saying that is amazing. I'm going to put this on screen because that is genuinely amazing. Yeah, you In could ju just read the first paragraph and it says everything else that you need to know about it. So it is one of the feel good stories that you very rarely see in video games. Um, so this is written by John Park for The Verge. Last year, June the 18th, 2019, No Man's Sky fans crowdfunded a billboard message to thank developer for work. Imagine that, the internet getting ready to like crowdfund 5k to support a developer that butchered a game that doesn't happen that doesn't happen but that shows you how good a job they've done here so no man's sky fans have raised over four thousand eight hundred dollars to post a thank you message to hello games on a billboard outside the game developer's office the money was raised using a crowdfunding campaign on gofundme that was started by reddit user cameron g and also buy lunch and beer for the development team after it concludes on july the 14th after hitting its initial target of one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars to pay for the billboard itself the goal was subsequently raised to six thousand dollars with the extra funds due to be donated to the sydney children's hospitals foundation gg internet amazing well done well done and do you know what shout out to no man's sky you've absolutely smashed that good effort good effort i mean maybe maybe there's hope for the likes of anthem yet absolutely horrendous but is being reworked on maybe it's something that we will see in the ea player live conference next month or say next month a couple of weeks or whatever it is away now i mean it still is next month but like not long to go so maybe maybe um 
I mean, Anthem, not a bad game entirely, but just doesn't really do anything. Uh, so, same thing with No Man's Sky. Wasn't entirely bad, just doesn't do what people wanted it to do. So, could we see another one of those? The difference is, Hello Games isn't EA. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, 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 anyway. Let's move on. Uh, where do we get to? It was... Not that one. Not that one. Not that... What? Oh, there we go. It was this one. Um, so, I don't have as good a tedious link. I did have a really good tedious link. Vivi went down the more natural route of going to another yeah. free game. So, that's something that you can get. Uh, no Man's Sky is free um, if you're on Xbox Game Pass and it will be coming to PC. But one thing you can't get, I say get, I mean rather do, is attend BlizzCon. Uh, Salford Sirens outside, that's, that's my end. <laughs> That was loud. <laughs> That's all day. Salford National Anthem was Enixus in the chat. Um, written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. BlizzCon 2020 has been cancelled, but an online event is in the works for early next year. This year's BlizzCon will unsurprisingly not take place. Blizzard, which said last month it was too early to tell whether BlizzCon 2020 would be held, has now officially cancelled this year's show. During this time, we've had many discussions about what holding a convention could look like in the light of all the health and safety considerations we'd want to make, BlizzCon executive producer Sarah Lynn Smith wrote. We've also talked about different paths we could take and how each one could be complicated by fluctuations in national and local health guidelines in the months ahead. Ultimately, after considering our options, we've come to the very difficult decision to not have BlizzCon this year. It's not all bad news, however, because Blizzard is currently exploring the possibility of an online event, but that will likely take place sometime early next year. Blizzard is also trying to figure out how to support the competitive community now that BlizzCon's various tournaments will not be take place. Will not take place, okay. Uh, more details about uh, Blizzard's plan for the esports scene will be revealed in the future. Last year's BlizzCon was one of its biggest hosting reveals for Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. We hope we'll be seeing more of these games, uh, those games this year in some way. Interestingly, that the article doesn't mention anything about Blitzchung and the whole BlizzCon mm. being um, like cast in shadow because of all of that stuff that was happening last yeah. year. It's almost like they've forgotten about it already. What? Do you not That's remember? That's one hell of a carpet that they've swept that under, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, last year was big. It's amazing. They had Diablo and Overwatch. What about the big burning fire? Forget the fire. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so yes, no. Don't forget about the Diablo mobile game that they announced. So absolutely nobody's, uh, you know, re applause. I mean that's firmly under the carpet with Blitzchung Snorri as well. So let's get that in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, the way Blizzard have been recently, I guess uh, Blizz is a con. <laughs> uh, Rise. So that could really damage the release slash testing of Overwatch Two. Um, yeah, I haven't heard much about that. Have you? No, not at all. There's been absolutely nothing on Overwatch 2. Um, and it says, Overwatch 2 release is a waste. Overwatch League is dying. They killed... Uh, is that Heroes of the Storm? HOTS. Is that what it's called? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, I remember to Jordan talking about that quite a lot. But yeah, I mean, the Overwatch thing is is kind of weird. I don't see any of the esports stuff knocking around like I used to do. Um, I, mean, I don't know whether or not it just coincides with the coronavirus and not having the events to be putting on, but even... even towards the back end of last year and the early parts of this year i didn't really see that much about it so it's interesting to see whether or not the esports side of that is kind of teetering off a little bit um or what i have no idea yeah there's kind of like a number of different levels of theory that i would go down as someone that has no idea because i don't really care about overwatch if i'm being yeah. honest um but but like i'm, I'm thinking okay there's, there's all sorts of potential business reasons why that might not be working um if Overwatch League is dropping off, it's because it's happened a few years and people are bored. It's fine. No, not ever. It could be that Overwatch 2 has been released, and why am I bothered about Overwatch when I want Overwatch 2? This is not what I'm uh, psyched about now. You've told me that Overwatch 2 is coming, and that's all I can think about, so I'm not bothered about Overwatch. So Overwatch can get in the bin until Overwatch 2 is here. It could be that. Um, yeah. But obviously the landscape has changed as well. So we've had that sort of um, uh, what's franchise system set up by the Overwatch League where we've got uh, London Spitfire or whatever rather than I mean who what is that Cloud9 London Spitfire I can't remember it's a big it's a big um org anyway London Spitfire was for C uh, for COD wasn't it is it C9 is Spitfire yeah yeah um no that's COD's London Royal Ravens um, ah that's it yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah that's that's where I'm going to so so we've had that franchise sort of set up in Overwatch and now COD has taken that so is it a case of that's 
taken people's uh, attention because of the success of Warzone and, and reigniting uh, COD factions and, and so on. Or like, like Baby says, it could just be uh, that, um, yeah, people have got bigger things to be focusing on. So, so the Overwatch League, and the fact that it's not happening in the same sort of capacity, the fact that you can't go and see the event uh, in London, uh, maybe there was an event in London just before this happened. But anyway, um, none of it's happening. There is no event stuff now. So is it just dropping off because of that as well? There could be a, there could be a, a bunch of it. But yeah, C9 is Spitfire. I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting uh, to see how Overwatch League has dropped off from being one of the biggest market pieces in esports. To okay, where is it? The showpiece event kind of thing just kind of isn't there. Is that because BlitzCon, uh, not not BlitzCon, Blizzard and the Blitzchung stuff and all of the everything around their esports? Maybe Blizzard have said, okay, well let's just shut up about esports until we can get VG247 to sweep it under that rug and say, yeah, yeah, last year's yeah. event was big. Maybe they'll start talking about it again now. Now people are forgetting. Maybe they've, they've taken the decision to stop promoting while they give it a little bit of breathing space. Interesting, mm. interesting. Anyway, long story short, BlizzCon 2020 has been cancelled. Uh, so there is no Bliz uh, BlizzCon this year. There will be a digital event early next year. It may be back towards the end of next year. If that is the case, then it, next year could be a good year for Blizzard um, if, they yeah. if they manage to treat their community with all of the uh, morals and integrity that they have on the uh, plaques outside their main offices. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if they do have a digital event at the start of the year and then they do have a physical event at the end of the year, um, next year could we're talking about Overwatch going okay where is it is it really doing anything next year it could be absolutely pow Overwatch look at this and it, so yeah <sighs> let's go I agree with Rise <coughs> Rise made a very good point uh, Rise's point says uh, I'd put it down to the game just dying in general and the fact that a lot of pros slash ex-pros are all getting ready for Valorant dropping a massive esports uh, which may even uh, be a bad idea for the game I mean We've seen a lot of pro uh, Overwatch players actually wanting to get into the Valorant esports side of things. I don't know whether or not they think it's because they're going to have a bigger prize pool or it's just a better game for them at the moment, the board of Overwatch. So I do see that as a, a massive possibility from their side of things. Uh, I uh, Valorant, sorry, go on. I, guess I also agree with with Jordan's comment as well. So the, it's in, It'd be interesting to see where it goes because... Um, me and Bib have been talking about this recently as well. Uh, Jordan's comment, um, and Jordan um, has a background in uh, esports, uh, CSGO, education, and so on. So that's kind of where he's coming from this angle. Valorant will fail as an esport, possibly. Uh, people are already dropping off. It's just not fun to watch, and the maps are stupidly unbalanced. Um, it's because bigger prize pool and the fact that Overwatch is dying. So Valorant, but th that's the thing there. Valorant could fail as an esport, possibly. I, I agree. I think it could do. People are dropping off. Um, but there's a reason for all that people are dropping off because they've had to grind and grind and watch and watch to get uh, keys um, that's an artificial environment it, whilst it's huge and yes it got to 1.7 million concurrent viewers it got to 1.7 million concurrent viewers out of necessity not out of desire people had to watch to play um, people weren't even watching so when, when games have hit 1.7 million concurrent viewers on Twitch in the past that's because it's been a spectacle to behold not because it's something you have to do to take part that's like mm. that's that's running an entrance exam you have to pass the test before you can get into it the test is watching uh, the content so players are dropping off however uh, Valorant has the, the elements for success um, in terms of the, the mechanics the games it's uh, it covers the fact that things like Overwatch and stuff dying and it having bigger prize pools, yes, it absolutely definitely has the ingredients for success. It's just whether they can pull that off. I do agree. The maps being unbalanced um, mm. is is a huge, huge thing. It was like, what was that streamer tourney? It was um, Tim the Tapman's team versus Shroud's team. Um, and before the game even started, uh, Tim the Tapman was like, we'd not look to the schedule for the maps. It's going to be best of three. Um, but the second map... Is is basically you you basically They're playing a split, weren't they? Yeah, that's it. Split. You get you basically get the free win. Um, and Shroud was like, no, no, these are the rules. Let's stick with it. I'd be like, what? You Shroud, you're gonna win anyway. Uh, but yeah. but yeah, they absolutely whitewashed them because the maps are unbalanced. Um, yeah. But I agree with that. But I think if anyone was to if anyone was to try and make a good esport out of it, I think Riot is probably in 
the best, uh, the bestest, uh, the best of hands with Riot. Um, if they wanted to try and make a, a good competitor in something, then I think giving them the opportunity, because I mean, Valorant is a very, very good game, but I also agree that it has got flaws with the balances of the weapons and the maps. Like Jordan said, we can just play the game a million times and you would find that you die 75% of the time in exactly the same spot because everyone knows where you're going to be. There's no alternative routes or anything. That's the thing. Um, I mean, it's not just the dying, though, as well. It's it's the flip side of the coin. You go for the same fight. It'd be like, Bibby, you take uh, Heaven, I'll take A Long or whatever. Um, uh, and then, yeah, jobs are good. Uh, and I either die there or I kill someone there, and it's rinse and repeat. I get what you're saying there. But, yeah, sorry, anyway, continue, continue. Um, so, yeah, the, it, I think... This hasn't even come out of beta yet, as it is still in the beta stage. They haven't given it away for free yet. The only way that you have access to this game is by the, the drops that are enabled on uh, everybody's chats within the Valorant tab on Switch. So I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt that it's still not a fully fledged game yet. Um, and they will be creating maps to go on this because they cannot run with the same maps as it stands now if they're going to make a legitimate esport out of it. It just doesn't work. I think. Um, yeah. The, the... The fact that, I mean, it is a beta. When does it come out? Is it like next week or the week after? They did announce the date. Um, yeah, I think it's two weeks' time. So it's not long. So it's pretty much going to launch with what they've got, unless they have something in the bag that they're going to go, oh, and here's a, f a fourth map. Has it got three maps at the moment? I can't remember how many maps it's got. Um, however, the proof then will be in the pudding. Is Are they just going to mm -hmm. sit on split as it is? Or are they going to go and do what Call of Duty did when that London... Uh, Waterloo, the Piccadilly, sort of, yeah, Piccadilly, that's it. Um, that came out. Everyone's like, it's shit. It's just absolutely biased compared to one team. So they changed it within like the week and said, okay, the uh, spawns and, and the cover and blah, 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 blah has changed. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was much better. Um, yeah. And it's kind of, this is where we see if Riot are taking it seriously to the point of, no, no, it's, it's, look, it's got 1.7 million viewers. It's, it's fine. Are, yeah. are they going to sit on that or are they going to go, okay, we'll take your points and we're going to change stuff. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Launching with one new map, one new agent and a new game mode. That's it. See, I don't I don't see that's it as being a bad thing. Um, mm, slowly but surely, yeah. They're only drip feeding it. It's been out about seven weeks now, I think. But there's, has it? there's still lots and lots of people that don't have yeah. access to it as well. So one new map, one new agent and a new game mode is that's it to you. But to a lot of people, that's that's even more than they've not had before. Um, so yeah, Rise says I see Valorant having esports uh, being bad because they because people enjoy it because it's new and fresh. Announcing mm. another game to be an esport could do the usual and turn the community into a toxic uh, as cakes and be almost turn a switch so that everyone uh, and their nana tried to make it pro. Uh, then from there ruins the concept of a new fun game. I mean it can that do. It can do. Um, but some games that are heavily built and based on being competitive um, are quite quite accessible to new people some games that aren't based on competitive at, at all are toxic anyway i think it's just i think it's just communities and that the, the esport element doesn't necessarily be uh impact that you can yeah it's just people <laughs> i'm trying to, i'm still trying to think of a game because i hear this argument a lot i'm still trying to think of a game that is fun and competitive at the same time because they are not the same thing if you're playing a game to be competitive as an esport it's very rare that you're going to find that game fun. I'm sorry, it, it, they just don't go hand in hand. It's, um, it's yeah, it's just, it's a different thing. I mean, probably the use of the I know I, I know exactly what you're saying, but the use of the word fun probably is a bit generic because some people find the success of competition fun. Mm. But yeah, I completely get what you're saying. It's it's a different kind of pressure you're putting on yourself. Absolutely. But like me and you play PES for fun because we are not in a competitive environment. Like when we go on pl online and play co-op. We'll get frustrated, but we aren't. Our, our main aim isn't to absolutely annihilate everyone and not lose a game because we know that we're going to lose games in there. So we're playing it to entertain ourselves, entertaining yourself, and being in a competitive situation. We've been around esports for long enough to know that the people who are at the top of their game, especially in the PES world, they are not there to have fun, they are there to win. And, like, and that's where they get their things. fun. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the fun comes from full time whistle, and I've got my result. The, the, exactly. The, the ten to fifteen minutes before that, whilst you're in the competition, is on my way to fun. Uh, yeah. Whereas me and Bib will be in our co-op game, nil nil, eighty-five minutes through on goal, one on one with a keeper. I'm gonna do a, a nutmeg. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Fuck to me. That's it. It's, it's a small little glimpses for us where we can get small little wins. That's 
that's that's just how it is but we are never going to be at a stage where we are professional gamers do you know what i mean like professional gamers find fun when they win and they walk away with the trophy it's very rare that i mean the games that jordan's listed there halo counter-strike smash bros there is no way there is no way that any pro has ever lost in a final and gone well it was fun do you know what i mean it do, it doesn't happen like you either go for the win and that's where you get your fun by winning and dominating and being the very best no one has ever gone out in the first round and said, well, at least I had fun in a competitive environment. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion of it. I've never known anyone in any competitive game in that would ever have that mentality. Winning is your mentality if you are in a competitive thing. If you lose, it is the worst game in the world. If you win, you're having fun because you've won. That's that's just the way that I see it. I, I can't, I've can't. i never come across anything. Uh, uh, I've never come across anything any other way where it's been like that. Being a being competitive and going for a number one spot or a specific thing like in Pez, having a champ badge, that is not fun. It's not fun. Like going for something that's a high top tier, it isn't fun because when you lose, you have to start all over again. Yeah, I mean, so, the, <clears throat> yeah. the comments there, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Just, just to clarify, we're not saying it's a bad thing being competitive. No, absolutely uh, not. Uh, we work in esports, uh, so we're clearly not saying it's not a bad thing. But what, what we're saying is, um, having that esportsy sort of element isn't necessarily the same as creating something casual. You can play the same version in a casual mode. So, like, like PUBG, for example, added ranked yesterday to consoles, um, which is a very strict set of rules and regulations. Even that kind of gets rid of not not fun, um, but it makes it look. This isn't just the creative mindset. It's you must play 4v4. There is only 64 teams, uh, uh, 64 players, so 16 teams of 4v4. Um, you can do solos if you want, but you will be a one-man squad. Uh, you, you can do duos, but you'll be a two-man squad, three-man squad against fours. Um, there will be more ro uh, loot. There will be no red zones. The circles will move faster. It's all ge uh, geared towards run at each other mm. fast and, and die quick uh, and efficient. But then you go into the casual mode, and that's where they've got things like bots and stuff like that. So you can get fun casual alongside the serious round and so on but yeah they usually don't go hand in hand and jordan's comment there is is the issue is when games are catered to those players that play to win it's a very small percentage and you end up alienating the core casual scene which is massive and which is why lawbreakers died instantly 100 percent. if you get a game that's that's amazing and get, gets turned into esports it doesn't necessarily make for the best esports pubg is an example again um pubg esports a lot of people don't like it because it's not it's not always always action there's a lot of strategy to it, and you see teams like building, taking positions, and planning ahead, and and so on. It's like mm. chess; you plan three moves ahead, and hopefully you can get to it. Whereas COD, it's all about okay, we'll all lob our grenades here, we'll all rush, and 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 and, and you see action and consequence straight off, pow, pow, pow. Um, but yeah, when a game is designed about okay, how can we plan in action and consequence so people can see it? We can have flashpoints, we can create choke points, and stuff like that. Then that's when you. Yeah, you start to take out a lot of the fun for the casual massive. Uh, Rice is a perfect example of what I'm saying is Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Everyone played Apex when it dropped, and it was on another level, even though they, ha uh, they had a rank mode. As soon as they dropped the esports news, it practically killed the game off due to how it became. Yeah, that that is the downside of um, anything when you add ranking in something like that, because the video game, the video game, the, the specific game of Apex or ba ba Battle Royale is you are ranking within the game. You are in a, in a hundred, and you will have a rank out of one hundred. Ta-da! That's it. Um, so if you if you do a, a killer play, you're only going to take out one, maybe two people, or a squad if you do it well. You're only going to go up a few places. But but if you if you don't do it, you might die where you are, or you might not get very. But so you don't mind taking the risks. It's only like incremental stuff. Whereas if that that finishing in the top 60 top 50 top 10 whatever it is then has a further impact that's when you start to get people snaking playing sweaty playing defensively not pushing over the ridge to take out a team and sitting there because actually if i stay here i'm not gonna die uh, probably not gonna win but i'll get more points which will help to my overall score which defeats the point of battle royale he said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. anyway anyway we you we all know what we're saying uh so let's just kind of mm. kind of move on because you know we want to get to masters of the league it's like almost 12 noon then we want to get into master league so anyway there's one more news story to jump into then
Uh, I'll quickly run through this one, and it says GTA 6 may be out in 2023, according to Take Two Marketing Budget, written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. This article from this morning says the release window of GTA 6 may have been revealed through Take Two's marketing budget. Rockstar parent company Take Two has filed its annual 10K forms with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, and 10K is essentially a general overview of the company spend for the coming years. In this case, Take Two noted an unusual spike in its marketing budget in fiscal year 2024. Take Two expects to spend $89 million dollars on marketing between april 2023 and the end of march 2024 originally that spike was expected in the fiscal year prior and it was uh, at a relatively lower 78 million dollars according to a note which is a pdf via venture beat uh, from industry analyst jeff cohen this is where gta 6 is expected to release excuse me one second a nice little on-stream burp for you guys. Enjoy. Uh, in fact, Cohen says that a similar spike in marketing spend preceded the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2. Following that pattern, GTA 6 will likely be out between April 2023 and March 2024. For reference, $89 million budget... Uh, Eight, uh, for reference, $89 million budgeted to marketing spend is over twice that of any year from now until fiscal year 2024. We are not sure how much we should be reading into this, but we would note that this disclosure accurately predicted the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 prior to that game's announcement, Cohen wrote. Management has spoken very confidently about the pipeline over the next five years and existing live services execution has been excellent. However, the timing of the next Grand Theft Auto remains top of mind for investors, particular, uh, particularly with the stock near all-time highs. GTA 6 is reportedly already in development at Rockstar with a studio seemingly aiming for a smaller scale game that can be built on over time. Of course, that spike could also be attributed to a large volume of games coming out of the take uh, coming out of Take Two that year. Though that is unlikely, given how much money the publisher spends marketing Rockstar games specifically. It also goes without saying that this release uh, target could shift yet again, but we'll have to wait until next year's filing to find out if it has. And yes, that would be a decade after GTA Five. Woo! Big news that one potentially. Yeah. Story. You think it's that? Uh, could be, could be. Um, it's it's one of those things where it's kind of like mm, maybe. But we commented the other day just on how many different games uh, Take Two has in its pipeline. Um, obviously, there's all of the sports games and so on like that, and then there's obviously the Mafia definitive games and stuff that that are out now. But then there was what was it? How many different was it? Like ninety games or something that uh, that they were planning to release over the next. Uh, yeah, it's like ninety three games or so. Yeah. Was that like the next year alone? Um, yeah. And then there's all the things that that people rumor and obviously take all the rumors. Some with a pinch of salt, salt. Some with an absolute planet of salt. Uh, there's like the rumors of Bully, and there's rumors of uh, revisiting the world of La Noire and things like that. They're both Rockstar games, so maybe Rockstar. Uh, and there's stories previously of Take Two told Rockstar to make more games, so maybe eighty nine million dollars is over double what they've had. Uh, uh, yeah, for for reference, eighty nine million dollars budgeted to market spend is over twice that of any year from now until twenty 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 four. So, any other year they've 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 got half that budget, but for that year they've got double. Is that because they're going to smash GTA six? Possibly. Is that because they're going to release two games that year? Possibly. Is that because they're going to release GTA six and one other game that year? Possibly. It could go uh, any, any few ways. I do think it is, is likely though. The thing with it being such a large amount of money. And look at how much money GTA Five has earned that company. If there's a game that you're gonna spend and put everywhere, you're gonna have TV trailers. It's gonna be on bus stops. It's gonna be on uh, buses. It's gonna be on uh, website takeovers. It's gonna be on YouTube pre rolls. It's gonna be on ice cream uploads uh, on Twitch because you know we're absolute badasses and they need to get all up in this. Then yeah, you're gonna spend your eighty nine million. I mean, if, to, to be fair, they need eighty nine million if they want to get featured on ice cream uploads because we don't do that. Shit, <laughs> so yeah. No, I'm joking. It, it, it's very likely. It's very likely for that kind of budget. I would say it's very likely. However, it does say it could slip. It slipped once already. It could slip again. I would be, I would be surprised if GTA Six falls that far because they're making decisions now to start creating foundations for another spike in GTA. Those decisions are: it's been free on uh, Game Pass. Uh, it's now been free on um, Epic. So everyone will be starting to talk about it. The conversations will be the stoking the fires. They'll leave it a couple of months and something else will happen and so on. You can't do that for four, five, six years. I mean, having it that long is, is quite long. GTA, though, I mean, Rockstar are good at leaving six months and then giving you another uh, another 
teaser to, to pull you back in. You then let the flames die down to the point where it's just kindling, and then you throw more fuel on it six months later. Pow! So, 2023, um, that's only like two and a half years away. That's how we said to well to where they're starting kind of thing um i can i can i can see that if, it, if we're going past 2024 i'm not so sure not so sure so mm. so yeah i would say it looks pretty likely yeah another four years um how well, long will that be now then will it be over 11 years that we wouldn't have seen a grand theft auto for maybe yeah well that's around what, that anyway their their end line uh there we go it it, got, it also goes without saying that this release target could shift yet again, but we'll have to wait until next year's filing to find out if it has. And yes, that would be a decade after GTA V. So ten, yeah. 10 years from one game to the next. But imagine 10 years and the game's still at the top of the charts all the way through. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. It's never going to get overtaken. I'm sorry, it, it never will. It never will get overtaken. Is the likes of Minecraft and things like that still in the charts? I, I don't think they are. But this is hanging on. I mean, Minecraft will be now. After yeah, it will be now. Yeah, uh, but this is holding on. Like GTA Online, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. The only, like I said, the only things are um, the sales and stuff will start to drop now because PC. I mean, I know obviously those sales only count for physical sales, but PC has pretty much been given away for free. And obviously, if anyone missed it, they'll still need to buy the game. And if anyone doesn't have Epic. Uh, they'll miss the free sale, so they'll still need to buy the game. But PC, let's just say they've taken that one. They've swept the feet out of PC market. Everyone's got it. Uh, Xbox, it was there on Games Pass for everyone. I know that's a little bit different, but let's say they've taken the feet out of a lot of the market there. So they've kind of limited themselves to PlayStation there. Um, will it hit PS Plus at some point? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but the issue with doing that is you eliminate, you eradicate a large potential for future sales with doing that so uh usually that will happen when you want to drum up excitement for the next year. so the last of us uh remastered came out on ps plus was it last december when the game was supposed to be out in february uh yeah. so that was okay we'll we'll take the feet out of any potential sales for that because we want to sell more copies of the last of us part two um so yeah Let's give it away so we can get more people to buy the next thing. So they've done that. So that kind of makes me feel like we, we can't be too far away. But but then again, 2023 is kind of far-ish, but not too far. Anyway, 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 lots of lots of rumouring. Let's wrap things up because, you know, we've got the Masters of the League to jump into. It's five past 12. We need to drop off, get things set up and get back on. Uh, jump into the Ice Cream Uploads FC Arena, uh, the Manor House and all the rest of the goodness that comes with that but we will wrap things up for those of you that missed it though if you were late into the stream well you missed quite a, quite an exciting show uh let's run through the articles the first one is that a silent hill crossover is coming to dead by daylight and it looks pretty tasty uh next up we jumped into the fact that no man's sky is coming to xbox game pass for pc so you can get the game for free on the xbox and pc in june if you're an xbox game Pass subscriber that is it's not really free but you know what i'm saying uh following that blizzcon 2020 has been cancelled there's no physical event but there could be a digital event next year and then finally gta 6 might be out in 2023 according to a take to marketing budget that was uh published yesterday so yeah lots of lots of news not lots of lots of, lots of news and then like i say it has been a pretty exciting stream because we've had you know we've had hosts we've had raids we've had gifted subs and resubs so thank you very much everyone that's been taking part in that and then obviously all those itty bitties that were dropped on top of that bits in it so yeah much yeah. much appreciated everyone that has done that much much appreciated we genuinely appreciate the support it's it's it's, it's can, you, can you say the word appreciate again Graham? i think we appreciate the appreciation you appreciate it appreciate it yeah anyway we are going to drop off this is the end of the show we will be back at 10 a.m with more scoopage tomorrow um, but we are going to jump straight back on so if you're watching live on twitch right now stick on the channel we will go offline but then we will come back online again with masters of the league if you want something to watch through your, your lunch hour or whatever yeah, just stick around nice uh but before we do disappear is there anything you want to add babe yes of course if you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of your choice and you want to get involved in the conversation then you have two ways of doing that first way finding us on twitter which is at we've got with being at grave underscore day and of course at ice cream uploads the second way is to head into our discord there is a category in there that says the scoop news just drop your thoughts and impressions and the news article in there uh with your thoughts and impressions we'll add our thoughts and impressions at what time tomorrow mr graham day 10 a.m ish, ish. <laughs> so the uh, links 
are in uh, the chat for those on Twitch now. Exclamation mark socials will give you all of our social links. Uh, links? Links, even. Spoiler. <laughs> social links. Spoiler. Uh, they are all at Ice Cream Uploads. All of the links are at Ice Cream Uploads. And then following that, Exclamation mark Discord has put a link directly to our Discord server, which you can use to get involved in the Masters of the League stream, which follows this. But anyway, we are going to disappear. Have yourselves a lovely day, ladies and gentlemen. And all you new gifted subs will have a very exclusive emote that we use to finish all of our shows. So if you have it, feel free to spam it now. And, and if, if you have it, then also feel free to know. It's your prerogative, but do it. Do it now. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to drop off. We'll be back in a few. Have a lovely day. And remember, stay frosty.